Hello, in this video, I will talk on the memory management. Memory is, when we talk about the memory, we uh, refer to uh, main memory, which is random access memory. And this is the playing field where hardware and software mix. And memory management is the responsibility of the operating system. So because there are multiple applications uh, working at the same time uh, on the main memory, operating system needs to make this management so that uh, different applications do not overwrite uh, to each other's data. And so operating system takes steps to make sure that application accesses only the memory areas allocated to that particular application. Okay, And also, uh, as part of the memory management, operating system keeps track of the physical memory on the computer as well as hard drive space used uh, as extra memory available to the computer. Um, so let me scroll down. Um, okay, and as we talked uh, before, uh, the when an application needs to work on the data, the data needs to be brought from the hard disk drive into the main memory and the CPU works on that uh, data in the memory. And uh, caching is an important pr principle in computer systems. So normally information is normally kept in some storage system. As it is used, it is copied into a faster storage system. Okay, and so consider that uh, if you have a, a bookshelf in, in your home and then uh, you put some of the textbooks that you don't frequently use on your bookshelf. If, as for your uh, uh, notebook or your pen uh, or maybe your calculator, if you use them very frequently, you put them on your desk. So desk would be... Uh, could be much faster in the sense that if you need to access your calculator, you don't stand up and then go to your bookshelf. You just take it uh, on your desk. So it, that's why we consider that it is faster. The access time is faster. Okay, so that is the principal idea behind it. And so I will skip some of these details. And performance of uh, different levels of the storage. So we have disk storage. This would be uh, the slowest one, okay? And then we have main memory, which is the um, random access memory. Um, this is faster because it is based on the flash uh, memory technology. And then we have cache. Uh, it is faster than main memory but it is more expensive. And then we have registers. They are very, very fast and they are closer to the uh, CPU, central processing unit. And then, um, so it is much faster, but typical size, small, much, uh, uh, much smaller. Okay. Um, okay, so when we talk about the caching, so the main memory, so backed by, okay, so main memory, uh, helps to disk storage, cache helps to main memory, register helps to this. So uh, each of them uh, help the other one to increase the performance. And for example, migration of integer from disk to register. Okay, so it shows that. Um, so you can uh, read some of the details here. Now, uh, paging your memory. So uh, what does that mean actually? The Windows uh, uses hard drive space to extend the amount of memory available to applications. Okay, and the total pool of available memory is the virtual memory page pool or just virtual memory. So virtual memory composed of physical RAM and hard drive space and it is maintained by uh, VMM, which is Virtual Memory Manager. So let me explain this in a, a sample. Imagine that um, you, your um, main memory is only 4 gigabyte, And then uh, you have a 
let's say uh, you want to have uh, 12 uh, gigabytes of uh, virtual memory. So the extra eight uh, gigabyte comes from the uh, your hard disk drive, okay? And then uh, to the operating system, uh, all of these total uh, 12 uh, gigabyte is considered as a virtual memory because writing into the uh, hard disk drive and reading from the hard disk drive is much, much slower compared to uh, main memory. Uh, so this is uh, this transfer is costly. So uh, if you if your that that is why uh, if your uh, main memory space is low, then you have performance issue because of this uh, reading and write writing. Okay, and then this is it shows that virtual memory uh, in the Windows system. Um, okay, so here. Uh, if RAM is getting full, some information is moved from RAM to an array of the hard drive. And the location on the hard drive uh, is a swap file in the older version or page file in the current version of Windows. Um, and as application requests stored data, the virtual machine memory, uh, the virtual memory manager moves information so that the data is available in the RAM. Um, volume manager, uh, the, uh, okay, so here the, the disk drives the, in the early days appear to the operating system as a number of continuous disk blocks. So the entire disk drive would be allocated to the file system. Uh, the disadvantage is the flex, uh, lack of flexibility. If when a uh, this drive ran out of space. There was no easy way to extend the file system size. Okay, and also the as the storage capacity of the disk drive increases, allocating the entire disk drive for the file system often resulted uh, under utilization of the storage capacity. That means uh, you don't use your uh, storage capacity in fully uh, in a full uh, utilization. And I put some of the videos here. And so the LVM, so Logical Volume Managers, it is a software. It runs on the computer system and it manages logical and physical storage. Physical storage is how the storage is actually is uh, physically in the hard disk drive. And the logical storage means what the operating system thinks or the application thinks that uh, as the shape of the um, or the status of the uh, storage, okay. And so, for example, and L the LVM, so Logical Volume Manager, it is a intermediate layer between the file system and physical system. So it can partition a larger capacity disk into virtual smaller capacity volumes. So this is called partitioning okay so consider that you have i don't know maybe 10 uh, gigabyte of uh, hard disk uh, uh, actually 10 could be too small so let's say let me say maybe 300 okay so for this 300 you may split it into three uh, smaller partitions and each of them would be um, 100 uh, gigabytes of size and then you can use each of them for different purposes and you can uh, use format them differently and so on and also so this is partitioning or you could do the other way around which means you could uh, aggregate several smaller disks to form a larger virtual volume and this process is called concatenation so you may have heard this one in the programming such as string concatenation um, so this is you just put them uh, it is similar to you glue them each other okay and so here is the uh, uh, how it looks so we have hosts and then this is the physical volume actually we have just win uh, just one uh, big um, hard disk drive and then logical volume is that it is considered as three smaller uh, disks okay 
uh, each of them is logical partitions or the other way around so you might have three small size disks and then uh, as the logical volume uh, it is considered as one large uh, disks okay so that is the concatenation um okay what else mm, okay so some of the details here and then disk management so before you can uh, store any data on your disk you need to prepare the disk for use um, so the data is stored on a disk in a partition and that partition is uh, assigned a drive letter so there are two main partitioning standards MBR master boot record so this is uh, the old technology old format and the new one uh, which is supported since 2010 that is GPT uh, GUID partition table um, so if possible if your system supports it you should go with this because with the MBR there are a lot of limitations um, so uh, here you were allowed to create only four partitions on a disk and a table was created in the disk's BIOS to hold the partitioning information. In addition uh, to the limit on the number of partitions, uh, with the MBR, the maximum size of partition is two terabytes. So this process has been re completely rebuilt with the GPT partitioning model. Um, okay, so this part talks about the disk management. Um, okay, so in Microsoft Word, uh, in Microsoft Windows, Initial hard drive setup is uh, typically performed using the disk management tool. And so here we see that unallocated drive. So this uh, must be prepared before use. And then you right click and then here you select new simple uh, to prepare it to use. And in Mac, the initial hard drive setup is performed by the disk utility. And uh, here is a screenshot. Um, so working with the disk management, uh, there are a few tasks. So uh, drive status. Uh, so the first item to examine is the status of the disk. And so here you, you will see several indicators, uh, status col column. Uh, so it shows whether it is healthy uh, and then what roles or functions it provides. And also availability indicator. So this could be online, offline, and not initialized, and so on. And this type could be basic or dynamic. And base, basic disks are limited to four partitions, but dynamic disks don't suffer from this limit. Um, mounting, uh, so it is the term uh, used for connecting a drive letter to disk partition or network share. Um, Okay, so let me, uh, so you see uh, assigning drive letters with disk management. Uh, initializing, so the drive, before a drive can be used, it must be initialized. And uh, so you select either GPT or MBR. And, and GPT is the modern format and it should be used uh, if you don't have any compatibility issue. Um, Okay, so after the D drive is initialized, it will be automatically brought online. Um, okay, and creating partitions and adding arrays. So when you create a new partition on the disk, you right click on the unallocated space and you choose the partition type. So if you choose anything other than new simple volume, you will be required to convert it to dynamic disks and there are five types uh, to choose from. Uh, so these are simple volume, spanned volume. That means the volume actually uses space from two different dr drives and presents it to as a single drive with a single drive letter. Um, and striped volume, uh, that is the, the volume takes equal space on two or more disks uh, to write. So to have higher performance. Um, and this is the same as the RAID 0. And mirrored volume, uh, so the, this volume takes equal space on two disks and writes the same data to 
each disk uh, when saving data to the volume. So this uh, gives uh, the fault tolerance. Okay, so if a disk fail, so the all the data will be still accessible on the remaining disks. And then RAID 5, so we talked about this, so it uses the parity check to recover the lost data. And so extending the partitions, so this is another task, so you, you can see right here. So you extend the partition with disk management. Um, and you, you can shrink the partitions. If a partition is too large, you may choose to shrink it. Okay. Um, okay. And then uh, splitting partitions. Uh, once a partition has been created, you are not able to split the partition into smaller partitions. If you need to split a partition into two pieces, you will need to make a use of third party tool. Alternatively, you may choose to shrink partition, then create a new partition in the free space. Okay. Uh, and then adding drives. So that is the other option. Uh, so this is all. Have a nice day.